nice exercise, extremely nice. And I hope you were able to solve it because this exercise is nothing more than an American option in disguise. So this exercise, I think you saw American options or you will see American options for sure. Uh, and you know that a way of playing with them is using trees, binomial trees or generalizations. And this is exactly the same type of exercise. So to solve this exercise, you have to use the same reasoning you would use for an American style option. So I propose the following game. I toss a single die no more than three times. You can stop me when you want. After the first toss, after the second, or you can wait until the end. And the last one is necessarily the third. When you stop me, we look at the die and we look at the numbers of, uh, the number of dots that appear on the face that looks towards us. Okay, so say that this face is a five, I give you five dollars. Or if you want to make the game more interested, I give you five thousand dollars. Okay, now the point is, what is your strategy? So, how can you decide when you stop? So the decision is, do you wait until the third toss, just the second, you stop after the first? Now, here what we do, as I was telling you, uh, is just to apply the same thing that we would, we would apply for American options. We will also assume that we are risk neutral. This is interesting in the sense that since nobody is telling you anything about risk appetites, we assume that we are neutral to risk, okay? So it is to say that we not necessarily look at the strategy that minimizes the variance or minimizes the standard deviation. Uh, since we don't have information, we are just assuming the basic setting of risk neutrality. If, for example, the problem would give you more information about the risk appetite, maybe the solution could be different. Now, you have to take your decision to go on or stop me in tossing the die. Now, after the first toss or after the first roll, as you want to say it, you can stop me or I can continue. After the second, you can stop me or I can continue. But after the third, I necessarily stop because we decided that I will roll at maximum three times. So, actually, there is no optimal stopping for the third roll. So the third roll, I stop necessarily. So what we have to do is to find the optimal stopping for the second and the first toss of the, of the die. So what we do, we go from the third to the second. It's always better in this type of exercises to go backwards instead of going forward because going forward typically can generate more easily errors. If you go backwards, you already have at least something that you can exploit for your computations. Now, imagine that we are after the second row. If we are after the second row, necessarily you decided not to stop me after the first, okay? If we are after the second row, you can look at the die and decide if we go on with the game or you stop and you get the money that you are uh, deserving looking at the dots. Now, if you choose to go on, we can compute the expected value of the dollars that you will get in the third row. This is simple, because if I throw my die for the last time for the third row, you can get a number between one and six, trivially. Every single phase, we can assume has the same probability, so it's a fair die. And if it's a fair die, what is the expected value? Is just the probability that you get $1 multiplied by $1 plus the probability that you get $2 multiplied by $2 plus the probability of $3 multiplied by the corresponding probability and so on. So at the end, it's the expected value of a discrete random variable. So 
the toss of a die is an example of discrete random variable. You can have one dot, two dots, three dots, but you cannot have 1.73 dots, okay? Or square root of two dots. So you just have six possibilities, each one with a mass, with a positive probability. If I want to compute the expectation, I just take the sum of all the numbers, all the dots, all the dollars, okay? There is a one-to-one -one map between dollars and, uh, and dots. So all the, the dots divided by six because the probability of each single case is one over six. So this is $3.5. It means that if at the end of the second toss, you decide to enter in the third, the expected value of the third is $3.5. If you want, you can compute the standard deviation is 1.71. Do that because it can be an exercise. You can compute the variance, which is 1.71 squared and so on. So how can you choose to go towards the third toss or not? Now, if the expected value of your third gain is $3.5, now with your game, you cannot actually get 3.5 you can get one two three four five six so this is an expectation it does not correspond exactly to a state of the world because you cannot get 3.5 but since we are risk neutral what we can say is that okay if i expect to have 3.5 i can round that to four so if i observe after my second row a number that is three or lower, then in principle, by going towards the third row, I can improve my situation because in the third, uh, in the third row of my die, I can have a higher expected value with respect to what I see in front of me, which is a three, a two, or a one. If conversely, I observe in front of me a four, a five, or a six, moving towards the third throw would make my return decrease in principle because 3.5 is smaller than four, five, or six. So a simple rule, if you are risk neutral, is to toss again if you can expect to have a higher return or stop tossing if you expect that your return is lower. Now, if in front of you, you have a die with one, two, or three, then you go on towards the third. If you have four, five, and six, you stop. So this is what happens after the second toss. But in order to reach the second toss, we have to pass the first toss. So if we go to the first toss, then we have two extra rolls in front of us, the second and the third. If we ask for the second row after the first one, it means that there is a 50% probability that we got less than three in the first and a 50% probability that we'll get more. Using the same reasoning that we have between the second and the third toss, what happens? If I observe three or less in the first toss, I know that in the second toss, I can get a higher expected return, which is 3.5. So the probability that I observe three or less for me is one half, because I have just six possibilities and three or less is half of the possibilities. So one half times the expected return of the second toss, because I was observed three or less, so I will move to the second toss, plus one half the Opposite situation, that is to say, I have observed in my first toss four, five, or six. So if this is the case, what happens? Uh, if I observe four, five, or six, I have a higher return. So it's one half the return I can expect in the second toss, one half times 3.5, plus one half the return I could expect in the first toss if I have, if I have uh, something that make me stop. If I compute this, it's 4.25. So after this computation, I have that in the first toss, I will continue if I uh, get four or less, and I will not, and I will stop if I get five or 
more, okay? Because if I have an expected return of 4.25, I can only improve that if uh, I get five or six. So if in the first toss I get five or six, I stop. Otherwise, it is more convenient for me to try again with the second toss. So at the first toss, the, the rule, your strategy would be always to compare the die with the expected return of the next tosses. In the first toss, that means that you have to score at least five or six to stop, otherwise you continue. In the second toss, you have to score at least four or more, otherwise you continue. So if you put everything together, what is the probability that you get five or six in the first toss? It's just the possibility over six, so it's one third. It's one third times the expected return of getting a five or a six, plus two thirds, so the fact that you will continue, times the expected return of the next two rolls that you have already computed, which is 4.25. So in principle, you have an expected return in this game, game of 4.67. In reality, we could have stopped here because already here we already had the strategy. The strategy is to always compare with the expected return of the next tosses. After the first toss, I will continue unless I get a five or a six. And in the second toss, I will continue unless I get a four, a five, or a six. And if I want to know the final expected return, this is exactly the one I have computed. <laughs>